today. From Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders versus Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Las Vegas, Nevada. The atmosphere here, electric. No matter the venue, the home folks love their silver and black. They are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the Denver Broncos. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. He'll be led out by a seven-time Pro Bowl quarterback in his 10th NFL season now. That's Russell Wilson. And he just continues to throw touchdown pass after touchdown pass, leading the league here down the final stretch of the year. Guys will say that the numbers and the rankings, they don't matter to him very much. But I don't know how much I actually believe that. Sure, he's team first, but I think everyone would like to see him finish number one, including himself. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Oh, man. Can't do that. Bobby Massey, the right tackle, called for the penalty there. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Now Wilson, he'll buy some time right. And a quick shuffle pass here is complete. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. So eight yards on the completion there. And that'll lead here to a third down. Wilson. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Now it's Wilson sliding out of the pocket. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. Thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked by Trayvon Mullen. And the Raiders are going to take possession of the football as they force the turnover on the opening drive. The Raiders getting ready to go to work for the first time, and they're led by their quarterback in his eighth season now in silver and black, Derek Carr. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game. Bottom line, may not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That's a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Second and 10. A first carry for Kenyon Drake. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Card out of throw. And this goes out wide for Drake. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. 
So Carr will depart, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson, for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. The kick by Carlson is good, and the Raiders jump out to a 3-0 advantage. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. They have a bottom line. They wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, only gave up three points off of that, so it shouldn't be a difficult hole to overcome. It really shouldn't, as long as they're not listening to the chatter coming from the other side, because when you throw a pick, look, I know defensive backs, they have a tendency to be a little bit loud after they take one away but they also have a tendency to gamble a little bit more thinking they'll get a second one. Maybe they can take advantage of that with some double moves. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Flushed out right. This is Gordon on the dump off. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. Good job over there, baby. I see y'all. Good job over there, baby. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And down inside the 15 he goes. Another 13 yards there twice in a row. And they're on the move. Another first down as well. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. Escaping the pressure, and this is caught. Touchdown. Wait, hold a second here. A flag down. Let's see if this will stand. Would have put him in the lead, but hold that thought. Yeah, the celebration had to stop, didn't it? Because now you're on a real uptick. You're in the lead. Instead, you're still behind. Have to find a way to regroup. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. On third down, Wilson. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down, as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. And McManus able to put it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32-yarder. That's essentially... An extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it's it? A different feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. A check on the numbers a week ago for Waller. Ten catches, 106 yardage wise, and the score as well. And he's trying to prove the adage is not just how you start, it's how you finish. And he is finishing awfully strong, takes great care of his body. I expect him to go ahead and put a cap around this season. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. And let's check on the call. Offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot, but they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. The car's throw complete here to Waller. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. These two teams all tied after one. Throwing on second and long. Carr. And the Broncos get there and take him down. 
Bradley Chubb doing what he does best, getting that sack. Well, here's where having mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. Carr and the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Now Carr. And that's caught. It's Brian Edwards. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop him well short. They're returning it. Here's Hamler. They'll net only 35 here following a 43-yard boot, 8-yard return. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. So the Broncos come back out as we give you a look at the playoff race in the AFC. And for them right now, not a done deal. They are holding down one of the final three wild card spots with two weeks to go. But, you know, there are others, Charles, kind of nipping at their heels a bit. And, Brandon, it's always worth keeping in mind, and I have to keep writing it down for myself. Remember, it's seven teams in each conference now making the playoffs. So that brings more important games to the end of the season. So in theory, more teams alive for a postseason birth later in the year. Flush to his right. Outright, this one goes to Patrick. A gain of six there on first. <laughs> on second down, they'll run with Gordon. It's a first down and more for Gordon. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Melvin Gordon with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Broncos have taken the lead. If you did know it, it won't surprise you to find out that this team leads the league in scoring. They've been a quick strike team all season long. There's another example. They did it again. This offensive coordinator, right now you can write his ticket towards being a head coach. He's advanced in the ways of offense. McManus's point after is good. And the lead is now 10-3. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Phillips, he's not going to bring this one out, so they will begin the drive at the 25. The offense for Las Vegas about set to begin the drive. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now Carr. He gets this to Devontae Adams. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. That's caught by his tight end, Foster Moreau. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. To throw his car. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed, and on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there finding him in stride for really good yardage. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Here's second and 10. Caught out right by Renfro. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 31-yard line. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. From the gun, it's Carr. Our score, 10 to three, with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Now Carr. 
That's into the hands of Edwards. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 13-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Now, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. Now, Carr again. That is caught at the seven-yard line. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll run it with Jacobs, and he'll take it into the end zone for a later touchdown. Josh Jacobs hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Raiders are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. So the first drive ended in three. This time they take it down and punch it in the end zone. So that first drive felt like they were just gathering knowledge, didn't it? Just enough to kick the field goal on the first one. And the second time they put it all together and got it all the way to the end zone. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that drive, 12 plays in length. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Taken at the goal line. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. The Broncos going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to play, they may be looking to pick up some yardage here, maybe try and come up with a field goal to seize the lead before intermission. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. It's caught inside the 25. And all the way home for a Broncos score. Jerry Judy, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Broncos able to show off their quick strike ability. Now that's a heck of a response to regain the lead after we had seen the touchdown to tie the game. I would say what we just saw there was a great amount of poise because typically when teams tie the game up, it's a little bit of a, how would you say, you kind of kind of take a step back and have to get yourself regrouped. They regrouped in a hurry, didn't they? They attacked back after they'd been tied. And in a big way, that was a statement long touchdown. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Phillips, he's not going to bring this one out, so they will begin the drive at the 25. The Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get in the field goal range. Looking sideline incomplete. These two teams matching up for the second time this year. Their first meeting back in October, week six. And it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for this. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Alexander Johnson. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. So this is something we didn't see at all from this offense in the victory last week. That's a turnover. They didn't have any, but giving the ball away here in the opening quarter. I love the surprise in your voice because it's exactly what you stated. Didn't see it last week, but it's a key to their win. And it'll be a key to this game as well. Protecting the football. Didn't get it done there. And they're going to speed things up here. And this is going to be intercepted. Jonathan Abram picks it. And the Raiders are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. They'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he'll work this back to right around the line of scrimmage and surrender there. 
So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Some critical games going on as teams fight for those final playoff berths. Let's get you around the NFL here in a busy Week 16. We begin with a clash of Titans in the AFC. Two of the better teams of the last decade. Pittsburgh take it on KC. And it's the Chiefs who have the lead in that one. Patrick Mahomes looking good. Two touchdown passes. From there, we head over to the Pacific Northwest. Check on the Seahawks at home in Seattle. And they've got the lead over the visiting Chicago Bears. Tyler Lockett, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they were losers in that one to the visiting LA Chargers. Justin Herbert, excellent in the win as his guys up their mark to 11 and four now with one game to play. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team. The Raiders are going to have it first, and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action. And no run back here as the third quarter will commence with a touchback. Now comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Carr. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Throwing now is Carr. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play <laughs> -play guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. From the gun, it's Wilson, rolling to his right, finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. They'll run for it. It's Gordon. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They only needed about four or five inches there, relied on the big guys up front, and got it done. Yeah, this is the time to just go ahead and hit it straight ahead. No juking, right? No movement in the backfield. Take the ball and go. As I heard a coach tell a player a long time ago, save your dancer for the club, son. Just get up into that line of scrimmage. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. He had no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier. Touchdown! Melvin Gordon. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. 
Partner, they had a good lead as they went in at the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes, and while this game is far from over, I love their approach. McManus now for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. That time, a six-play drive, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Phillips, he's not going to bring this one out, so they will begin the drive at the 25. The Raider offense set to get this drive started, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. throw and a man over the middle and it's complete and this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 20 yard line and that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage so timing is everything this time you wait for his man to come open puts it right on him and they pick up a first down and he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18 Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. To throw, it's Carr. He finds his man, Johnson. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Here's Jacobs. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Here's Carr to throw. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. Back to throw. Carr. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been many. This defense has been all over them. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone around the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter. Look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Now Gordon on first down. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Unbelievable. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Eluding the pressure right. They'll get that complete to Albert O. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Throwing again here, Wilson. They'll roll him out right. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. One quarter remains here in week 16. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And the pass is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Broncos are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. Now McManus for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. So that drive spanned five plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Phillips, he's not going to bring this one out, so they will begin the drive at the 25. The Raider offense heading out as we take a look at the playoff race in the AFC. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. So the incompletion, and now it's second and ten, again from the 25-yard line. Shotgun now for Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle him after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the gun now on third down, Carr. Looking again for Waller, and he's got him again. And he is going to have the Raiders' first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Jacobs. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Second and 11 now. Again, it's Carr. They'll swing that out wide to Jacobs. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Able to get away, but he can't get away forever, and down he goes. Randy Gregory has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Looking to throw. Carr. It's a screen to Richard. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Toward the sideline, it's complete. An athletic grab, but still well short of the first. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. And this one is incomplete. 
The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Broncos are going to get the football back in great field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about it. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Raiders pick it up. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. So that play, I mean, it was pretty well blown up from the start, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and when you're running the option like that as a quarterback, you have so many different keys and reads to make that sometimes as you're making them, you're not protecting the ball the way you should, and it gets popped free. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Back to throw. Carr. He gets this one to Johnson. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play. And it'll be third down. Car to throw again. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice long soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. Yeah, once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. It's caught here by Adams. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Back to throw again. He finds his man complete. It's Bowers. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. A gain of six there on first. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And that'll bring up a third down. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. They'll look to throw again. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. A great effort there. His first touchdown on the year. And the Raiders have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Carlson now to add the extra point. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a Las Vegas touchdown. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Broncos are going to get the football. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did, indeed. I think we're down to none. And the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Wilson wants to throw it. He'll buy some time right. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. They well, certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. Flushed out right. Again, he targets Judy, and this time the catch made. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. To throw is Wilson. Throw right side is going to be caught by Judy. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Again, Wilson looking in zone, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. Touchdown, Broncos! Jerry Judy with his third touchdown so far, number 13 now on the year. And the Broncos are on their way to a 13th win on the year as they add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning, right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Phillips, he's not going to bring this one out, so they will begin the drive at the 25. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now, and if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Completing it to the right side, Johnson. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they can put him in a number of different places. In line, H back, put him in the slot. In this case, they put him out wide. Matchup nightmare. Who are you going to send out to cover him? And he picks up a first down with that catch. And he's brought down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Car now on first down. Johnson with a completion over the middle. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Again, they'll throw with Carr. He finds his man complete. It's Bowers. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Carr looking to throw on third and two. And able to complete it to Moreau. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 18. One final try now for Carr. And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. Just a formality now, but here's the extra point. And the kick is good, but obviously it won't matter. As they're going to go down and defeat here, this one's over. Well, on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they played to the final whistle, getting the touchdown there on the last play, but still, all for naught, really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say give them points for positivity. I like that. That part is good. But I often wonder, when the game is settled and the clock is run out, do we really need to kick the extra point? Oh, yeah. It it's be, silly. It's it, silly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know that people have explained before, well, you got to play it all the way through. Come on. This thing is done. So for Denver, they continue to rack up the victories as this one moves them to 13-2 on the year. And another road date awaits them next week as their opponents will be the Los Angeles Chargers. Meanwhile, for Las Vegas,